I was asked if I would go to Turkey, and I said, yeah, I'd love to go to Turkey. And, uh, and were you asked? Hmm? Were you asked? Yeah. I was looking for a job. I wanted to get out of Washington. Okay. Uh, being in the, the bureaucracy is not fun for me. I don't fit there. Uh, anyway, I got my assignment to Turkey, Athens. And I, uh, I bought a Peugeot mm -hmm. out of uh, France. I wanted to drive it, and the agency said, no, you're not going to do that. Okay, all right. Uh, so the Peugeot was delivered to Istanbul. And uh, I wanted to get my car. And one of the uh, Turks who worked for us, who knew everything, said, give me X number of Turkish lira, okay? And then he and I went to Istanbul. And he would walk up and say, Ahmed, how are you? And he'd slip Ahmed a few bucks. This is the way things are done in almost all the rest of the world, right. okay? You'd, Everything's a bargain, right? My car would still be sitting on the pier. <laughs> and, and, is that right? Yeah, if, uh, if you don't do it that way. Anyway, I got the car, and, uh, and I loved it. Uh, well, what do we do? Turkey is just a fascinating place. Uh, and unlike Greece, where during the regular tourist season, you pay for just about anything, including taking pictures. Oh, is that in right? Turkey, everything in our day was free. And uh, we had become very friendly with... Uh, uh, a young Turkish pharmacist, and uh, I, I will never forget this. One day he came to me and he said, I need your advice, Hugh. I said, what's up? I don't know whether I should immigrate to Canada or get married, and I need your advice. I said, why don't you get married and move to Canada? <laughs> well, I can't do that. And I said, uh, who are you going to marry? You're going to marry so-and-so? Oh, no, she's too fast for me. He ran with a uh, a jet set crowd, very attractive women, fast. Uh, and then he one day came to me and said that uh, he has, uh, his bride has been selected and he is going to get married. And he wants to know, are we taking a vacation this summer? And I said, yeah, when are you taking the vacation? I said, well, I haven't looked it up yet. I'll look. Why? Why do you want to know? Well, we, I'm getting married, you know. And I said, what's that got to do with us? Because we want you at our wedding. Oh. Okay. And uh, by the way, we are still in contact. I Is left, that so? left Turkey in 74. Okay. And we are still in uh, email contact. When we went to Paris a couple of years ago, Ilker and Suela flew into Paris to be with us. Was that your last assignment? What? Turkey. Uh, Turkey, yeah. Yeah, yeah. my last foreign, foreign oh, assignment. Okay. I had other assignments. So what were our relations with Turkey nation to nation at that point in time? How, were the, you know, how was the United Very States? Very good. It was good. They were excellent, just excellent. And uh, one of the dumbest things we ever did as a nation was just tell the Turks, uh, we want you to stop growing opium. Uh, the word Afyon is Turkish for opium. The sixth largest city in Turkey is Afyon. Oh, okay. Okay? And the Turks told us, if we do that, we will lose our government. Well, we want you to, okay, you, you, your Truman Doctrine saved us as a country. We owe you. We'll stop. So they stopped growing. I have been in the fields, the Afyon fields. And... Uh, they stopped growing the stuff, and uh, two years later, the American pharmaceutical concerns throughout the world, uh, not just American, we need the opium for of course. It's a Medicine. legitimate yeah. part of the medical trade. Right. And uh, of course, the Turks aren't intelligent enough to realize that this has happened. We asked the Iranians and the Pakistanis to start growing opium. This is, we, the Americans, stupid. 
Anyway, the Turks found out and it started growing right away. Uh, it was dumb. Our, our war on uh, drugs is insane. Uh, as long as you provide me a market, I will sell. That's and we've got the market. We are the market. the market. And we're killing a whole bunch of our people doing it. It's terrible. But that's all aside. Anyway, back to Turkey. Uh, We, one of my closest friends was uh, Erhan, who was the chief of protocol to the mayor of Ankara. And we were really quite close. And uh, one day he said, we're gonna go fishing at Yeti Gilair. Yeti is seven and Gul is lake and Lair is plural. So seven lakes okay. up near the Black Sea. Okay. Beautiful place. Uh, Rhododendra, by the way, I think started in Turkey. Okay. As you drive to the, all the hills are just pink with rhododendra. Yeah. Wild. Is that right? Anyway, we go to uh, Yeti Gilair, Seven Lakes, and because we're spoiled brats, uh, even though there's a limit of three, we take as many as we want. And uh, while well, my Turkish friends are great uh, sports fishermen, and uh, Tylon says to Janice, Janice, heat up your frying pan. Janice heats the frying pan. And Tylon pulls in a trout and says, try this. This is fresh. It'll be <laughs> that kind of relationship, just fabulous. Uh, one night, uh, or one day, our son said, oh, there's my favorite teacher, Dad. We're there with about 25 Turks. We're the only non-Turks. And in comes uh, from the American school, uh, Lance's favorite teacher and her husband, who is a counselor. And uh, Erhan says, well, we'll invite them to dinner. What's dinner? Milk-fed lamb. When we arrived at the place, a hole had been dug in the ground about a yard deep and a half a yard wide and hot lots of uh, charcoal. And then you hang this milk-fed lamb on a, a skewer down in there, put a tin top on it, cover it with earth, and go fishing. While they're fishing, I'm fishing this way. And uh, they can't understand that until I show them a picture. Where'd you get that picture? Right next to you, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, that night we had dinner. We have a bonfire that's almost as big as this room. Erhan likes big fires. And uh, there is a log and a log. And Janice is sitting here with the mayor's wife, the mayor. And I'm sitting over here chatting with somebody. And we are drinking a little bit of raka. And out of nowhere, Janice comes running over to me and says, get that guy, this is the counselor, get him in his trailer. He knows where his trailer is. Jan, let him get there. Hugh, get him in the trailer now. Jan, Hugh, at which point Erhan comes up and says, I'll help you. So we get the guy and we put him in his trailer. I don't know what this is all about. Following morning, uh, we sleep late. Everybody's gone except the four McMillans. I said, what was that all about last night? Jan said, well, I got up and walked to our tent to get something. And when I walked back, this counselor, who had had a bit to drink, reached up and grabbed me by the crotch and pulled me into his lap. And of course, I jumped up. At that point, three Turks came to Janice and said, we are your champions, Janice. He is dead. <laughs> oh, and Janice said, no, he's just <laughs> drunk. No, he's not. He has insulted our brother's oh, wife. Gee, I'm a brother. Mercy. And they're going to kill him. They're going to take him out in the lake and get rid of him. <laughs> you, did they? You, they didn't, uh, did they? Huh? They didn't, did they? No, because Erhan <laughs> broke the camp and helped me get him into his uh, trailer. Oh, God. Yeah. No, you don't mess with a, a, a Turkish woman. You don't, you don't oh, mess well, with yeah, another yeah. man's wife. Right, right. At yeah. all. There are... Uh, when when uh, this is another scene, we're at... Uh, a beautiful outdoor uh, place, dancing, music, food. And uh, Jan has to go to the potty. And Erhan says, accompany her. I said, she knows where. 
accompany her. You do not allow your wife to go to the party without you being right yeah, outside just waiting to make for sure. her. That they they protect their ladies. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the nicest things about the Turks, you just sneezed. Okay. I, okay. I don't say God bless or Gesundheit. I say choke yasha. That means choke many yasha years. May you live many years. Huh? Okay. And you say back to me, Sizdegerun, may you be there to watch. Oh, that is sweet. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I just love the Turkish. Well, and when I leave your house, you say something a, a Turkish. There's a Turkish custom that, yeah. that you say when we depart. Yeah. And, and what is that again? I walk you to the car. If, right. I, if I say goodbye and I'm sitting on my butt in the living room, that means, thank God you're leaving. Not quite that profound, but I don't give a rip whether I right, see you again. Right. If I say goodbye at the door, it means I wouldn't mind seeing you again, but it's no big deal. But when I walk you to your car, it means either I see you again or we're both dead. <laughs> <laughs> Friendships and Turks are... Yeah, that's some they, serious they business. They are profound. Yeah. Good food, too, isn't it? Huh? Good food there, oh, yes. Oh, fantastic. I'll never forget, I had a, a temporary assignment to Athens out of Ankara. And I thought, Jan, you're coming with me because we love the Greek food and we're looking forward to it. And when we got there, it was okay. And then we learned, the Greeks learned to cook from the Turks. Right but they weren't very good students. <laughs> That's what the Turks say. The Turkish food is unbelievable. Yeah. You can eat off the street. It's just fabulous. Yeah. They all smoke, don't they? Almost. But they're, they're cleaning up their act. As we... I was a terrible smoker. I was up to five packs a day. A you day. Were. Really? Packs. I only paid 10 cents for a pack because it was diplomatic. Okay, That was in Bombay, and I quit cold turkey. While you were still in the agency? Oh, yeah. This, I, I, I will never forget. 25 November 1962. 62? Yeah, 1962. I quit cold turkey. I was up to five packs a day. And I'm thinking, that's ridiculous. Nobody can smoke that much. But I'm accusing Jan of stealing my cigarettes. Uh -huh. She said, here's the key. You know, there's only one key. There's the drawer. Those are your cigarettes. And the next day, a carton was half full. And the next day, the carton was empty. I was smoking five packs a day. Same in Christmas. I called, caused a riot in the streets of Bombay because I got up one morning and decided, I'm going to quit. And I threw two cartons of cigarettes off the balcony into the streets. They had to bring in a water cannon. Were they American cigarettes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they were worth a lot. Uh, but all that aside, uh, if someone lit a cigar, I'd leave the room. I couldn't stand the odor. About a year into not smoking, I liked the smell of cigars. Two years, I started holding cigars, smelling them. Three years, 25 uh, November 1965, I lit a cigar. Gotcha. And I went back to smoking. But I never got back to five packs, maybe two packs a day. And then, uh, after I had retired, I'd been retired for some time, I was still smoking. And uh, Janice and I decided we we're going to visit Turkey again. Because we wanted to say goodbye to our friends before we we're all dead. And uh, when we came back from Turkey, this is in 1997. Okay. Uh, we have timeshares and we can trade them. I see. And we traded one of our timeshares for a 45 foot ca cabin cruiser on Elliott Bay in Seattle around Christmas time because we want to see the bright lights. Right. We didn't drive it, we just used it to, as a condo. Right. And uh, I It's really, a cool time to be there. Yeah. Christmas time, yeah. Yeah. I will never forget it's an icy rain. You don't smoke in the boat. 
I'm standing on a deck in an icy rain, protecting my cigarette yeah, so right. that it doesn't get wet. Right. And suddenly my brain said, you're not really that stupid, are you? So I put the cigarette out. That was 1 December 1997. I haven't lit one since. Huh. Yeah, I finally got rid of it. Yeah. Huh. And the secret is one day at a time. Yeah, it is. It's a powerful addiction. Yeah, terrible. Huh. So I was going to ask you, the, the family was always able to go with the ebb and flow oh, of your yep, assignments? Yep, never had any problem. So Janice must have been really special to be able to do that because she was being... She was fantastic. ...being uprooted, kind of, I, I would assume, without a whole bunch of notice, right? Oh, no, we had plenty of time. Did you? Yeah, uh-huh. Uh, oh, I want... Uh, Turkey is a place you should go if you haven't been. I haven't been. I, mean, I know a lot of Turks that, who lived in Germany. Oh, but, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. Ephesus, for example, was the New York Harbor of that part of the world at okay. one time. I mean, it was a very busy harbor. Right now, it's 13 miles inland. It's silted up. Oh, it is. Yeah, they but can't it's do preserved. Anything about that? Huh? They can't do anything about that? No, they don't want it. They don't need it. They have Istanbul. Uh, but it is fascinating. Just incredible. Turkey is filled. Like, for example, Mount Olympus. Everybody knows that's in Greece. It is not in Greece. It's in Turkey. And that's where all the Greek gods are, on Mount Olympus. And I skied on that mountain. <laughs> yeah. Now, I would recommend to anybody... Visit Turkey. Were you over in that part of the world when uh, Cyprus was having its problems? Yeah. 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 Uh, we had blackouts. That, that was 74, we, and we were leaving Turkey because uh, that was my, the end of my assignment there. And that was basically Turks against the Greeks all on that island, right? On the ground, yeah. yeah. And it's still divided, yes? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, the Greeks treated the Turks as a minority, in the way Southerners treat black people. And uh, the Turks decided, we've had enough of this, and we're going to be independent. So they cut a line down the middle and said, this is our country. So there's Turkish Cyprus, and there's Greek Cyprus. Right. Yeah. And they've been living peacefully since, haven't they? Sure. Yeah. Well, they don't like one another, but no. that's forever. Uh, that goes back to Ataturk, and that's a whole other story. Yeah, I know. yeah. Did you ever go to the Dardanelles? Remember where the British ships yeah. kind of got sucked into yeah. World War One? Yeah. G Gallipoli? Gallipoli? Gallipoli, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Churchill's madness. That was Churchill. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And do you know what really destroyed the force? No. Diarrhea. What? Diarrhea. All the Anzacs got diarrhea because the food was, there was no refrigeration. Oh, so they just ate bad, bad food. They ate lousy food and got sick. And uh, the last day of the battle there, when the Brits finally decided, Can't do let's it. get out of here. Yeah, right. If they had hauled, held on for one more day, they'd have taken it because the Turkish forces were down to no more ammunition. They had women loading uh, shells into the, uh, the uh, oh, long range rifles. Yeah, yeah. I know a lot of the, uh, uh, a lot of the forces there were from New Zealand and Australia. Yeah, and, uh, that was the main India. force. Yeah. Yeah. They still sing about that in their folk songs. Oh, you bet your life that yeah. they will never yeah. forget it. Yeah. And never forgive Churchill. Right. But he bounced back, didn't he? Oh, he sure did. Thank God. Oh, well, yeah. Do you speak English? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. He galvanized the Brits. I don't know how they did it. Just incredible. And we have... I. I will never forget, I had my own little radio in my bedroom and uh, with uh, protest from my parents, 
I would listen to the radio at night, and I'd hear Edward R. Merle. Sure. This is London. Yeah. He's on a building during an air raid. Yeah. And he's reporting. I've never forgotten that. Yeah. And Edward R. Murrow is a guy who, more than anybody else, took Joe McCarthy apart. That's right. Yeah. And he is uh, a graduate of Washington State University. And they've named the Edward R. Murrow School of Communication after him. He's a cougar. Yeah. I never got a chance to meet him. I wish I had. He'd, to me, he walked on water. He was something else. 